Hello everyone once again. So this is a bit of a follow on to my other video uh, a little while ago where we uh, looked at the distillation of petrol or gasoline and we looked at what the various components are. And the most useful thing possibly is the hexane and heptane fraction. Now if you ever worked in a lab at a university, or that's the only lab I really worked in, but I assume most industry labs are the same, uh, the solvent of choice for extractions are generally hexane or heptane. A hexane is better, but heptane is a lot less toxic. Labs these days are moving towards heptanes. Hexanes are commonly used as extraction solvent, but they're they're generally not accessible to the the sort of the home chemist uh, because because they're so flammable. Um, companies don't like shipping them, and also because people tend to use them for drug synthesis, like um, extraction of cannabinoids. Can it? Can it? Yeah you know THC shit from from weed and whatever I, I think that's the reason you can tell how much drugs I do I can't even pronounce cannabinoids correctly obviously we're not making drugs but hexane is still a useful solvent so um, we have here well, roughly 700 mils of petrol I've overfilled the flask a little at the point of today is to try and get out the hexanes and the heptanes and we're going to do that first by distillation and then we're going to clean it up a little bit because there's going to be alkenes as well as some aromatics that are going to come over and then uh, run another distillation and then we should be left hopefully if, if nothing goes wrong um, with just pure alkanes which will be useful for um, extractions or general solvent use around the lab. Pretty standard setup it's a uh, very windy today which makes me very uncomfortable about the setup but it should be fine I've clamped it well. I've just put the hot water in so it's just starting to boil of course as we know before a lot of this uh, sort of boiling at the start is just sort of butane coming off um, so I'm not going to be able to collect anything. Another chilly 33 degree day in which we're doing this in Hmm, everything seems fine and dandy. So the stuff distilling off now is actually has a boiling point of 40 degrees, which is the pentane. Last video we did, we actually used quite old fuel. Fuel that had been sitting around in a jerry can for a month or two. And we didn't really see much low boiling stuff like this pentane. Whereas this is brand new fuel, I got it the other day. I think we're seeing a lot more pentane than we than we have. Um, and that pentane's fine, um, we'll treat it like the hexanes, but um, you know, at a, at a boiling point of, of 40 degrees, we can't expect it to stick around for too long anyway. So during storage, it's just gonna piss off. So uh, we'll collect it and, and treat it as, you know, as such, but it's not really what we want because uh, it's just a bit too volatile. Only just gone over the 40 degree mark, where are you now? Oh, nearly 50. So we can see there's actually a lot of uh, low boiling stuff. You can see there's quite a lot. Yeah, hopefully now we can actually move on to the hexane <laughs> a part of things. Alright, I switched out the uh, water bath for just the uh, flask directly on the hot plate because it's a, it's a flat bottom flask. It was just too slow with the water bath and as what seems to happen every single video, we're just running out of light. I just haven't adjusted to daylight savings, so it now gets dark here at about 5.30. Like a month ago it was getting dark at 8pm, so it's just that extra time I'm just not, <laughs> just haven't adjusted to. With a hot plate this hot, we could just easily push it through into the aromatics, which you don't really want to do. Um, but it should be alright as long as the uh, column is working pretty well and I think it is because it is very windy so um, we're getting a lot of cooling through the column so everything is going along fairly nicely we just got to try and um, get a decent amount of solvent to continue to the next step before it gets uh, really really dark <laughs> all right well I'm gonna call it um, we have well, probably 200 mils. It's not stilling off particularly fast. We didn't break 70 degrees on the thermometer. It's enough to go on with. It would have been a bit nice, a bit more. It's dark and we really should <laughs> stop distilling flammable solvents when it's pitch black. Let this all cool down. All right, so we have our solvent here. You might think, well, we could just stop here. And I guess we could in a way, like this is probably for many applications, this is a perfectly fine solvent to use. But apart from the fact that that wouldn't make a very good video, um, it's also, you know, a bit half-assed, really. What we really want to do is we really just want these compounds. So this is our pentane, our hexane, and our heptane, and also some cyclohexane will be in there as well. So what else is in here? We have our alkenes, so that's any of these structures with a double bond in it. Benzene, I know we stopped collecting any distillate before uh, it got really over... 80 degrees, oh, bloody lost my chalk. 
but toluene is such a major component of petrol that there's possibly some uh, that's contaminated through and also any alcohols we know as I discussed in my previous video that Australian fuel doesn't really have any ethanol or methanol in it but you know in in trying to make this accessible to other countries uh, a lot of other countries fuels will have methanol or ethanol or isopropanol or or higher alcohols that sort of thing in certain circumstances we really don't want any of these in the solvent we just want these nice inert and their isomers obviously there's going to be more branched than there are straight but i'm just drawing the straight ones there so what are we going to do we're going to try and oxidize all of these and the oxidizer we're going to use is potassium permanganate k and that's going to oxidize these alkenes to you know a mixture of all sorts of things like diols uh carboxylic acid it's going to cleave some it's going to turn some into ketones it's going to hopefully oxidize all the toluene into benzoic acid if we uh, push it all the way the alcohols into carboxylic acids however the one downside is that we won't be able to touch the benzene i can't think of a good way to get rid of the benzene very easily we really don't have to worry about it too much because it's really only present in about one to two percent in fuel overall and it also boils at higher boiling point than what we have um, anyway so Really, we're looking at such a minor component. We're not going to be able to make like a, a food grade product if, you know, if I had to call it something like that, even though at no point should you be thinking about, you know, food or anything to do with chemistry. You know what I mean? I thought I had a lot more permanganate than I do, but it's fine. I don't think we should need too much. Uh, it's interesting. Chemicals, where I got this from, they've chemicals hobby chemicals australia they really tried um but they uh, just disappeared one day so i don't think they made any money <laughs> i think they probably lost all their money with the company but still it was good while they lasted i'm going to add a real small amount at first just to i mean to see if anything actually happens at all if it gets reduced um but also because there's always a chance it just goes absolutely nuts so we don't want to add a lot of permanganate I always turn the camera off just when something exciting happens, but see pretty quickly the uh, colour disappeared. So there's obviously stuff reacting in there in the solvent which we don't want. So this is good. This is good. The big problem with permanganate oxidations is that very, very quickly it gets impossible to tell if there's any permanganate in there which is really what you want to be able to see that purple color see the purple color fade and then add a bit more permanganate and see it fade because the, the manganese dioxide builds up very quickly it really obscures any purple color and i haven't added that in my, or i've added a lot more than i thought i needed to probably about one to two grams really you know even after the first you know 100 milligrams or so it started to get impossible to see if there's any permanganate sort of left or not especially because it tends to like kind of cake on the glassware itself which is real shit to clean and also makes it hard to see what's going on anyway the, the way to check is um if you have just a beaker of water here and then you just take a drop of reactant mix out of there and of course we're not actually caring about the bottom layer so even though it's only a drop it's actually not getting removed from our yield at all if you add it to the water and there's absolutely no purple color then it's obviously you've got no permanganate. But because the good thing about permanganate is that it shows up in very, very low concentration. So we can see that. I just added a drop before. Um, and for the first time, the color is persisting. So that means the permanganate has nothing more to oxidize, which is great. So that means we've oxidized everything out. Um, I haven't really refluxed it too much, but I think it should be all right. I'll let it stir for a little bit longer. It's been stirring for like 12 hours with um, gradual additions of the permanganate. So we have our solvent here, it's 
Really not that much, is there? The most ideal next step really is to put some sodium or potassium metal into this, and that will help dry it before uh, the distillation. But instead, well, I'm gonna put some sodium hydroxide in there. The problem we're trying to solve is the ketones because we think there might be ketones in there. Well, there wouldn't be that many ketones originally in the petrol, but we may have formed some with the permanganate oxidation. And we didn't remove them with the, uh, the base wash and they're still gonna have a, a boiling point like within the range of what we're gonna collect over. If we store over sodium hydroxide, the hope is that maybe the acetone and other ketones will enolize and do, I don't think enolize is a word. But they'll, they'll form the enol form and, and um, do condensation reactions. We should hopefully see that with a slight red color of the solution. And then once they've got that, that um, once they condense and form like larger molecules, they'll be out of the boiling point range for our distillation so we won't have to worry about them. So that's a way we're gonna remove the ketones. And also storing over base will help get rid of any of the last carboxylic acids that will be remaining in here, even though they'll probably already be out of the boiling point range. It'll just be a, a good way of removing all them. Right, here we are two days later, and it might be a little bit hard to see on camera, it usually is, but there's some very slight yellow coloration in the flask. This is due to the uh, the aldol condensations, well, I'm not sure if it's actually aldol stuff, but just the condensation reaction to take out the ketones, which is great. So um, there's really not that much in there, so only a very, very slight yellow tinge. We're gonna distill this just straight off the sodium hydroxide, that'll drive any reactions further, and. It, I should keep the water in there, seeing as we're not going to go much past uh, 75 or 80 degrees, so the water should stay with the sodium hydroxide, that should be fine. I need a stir bar in there, but that's great because I happen to have bought 22 stir bars off of eBay today. Well, like two months ago, but they've just arrived. And I already feel like I need more stir bars. <laughs> I lose them so much and it's just so annoying. I just thought, fuck it, I'll buy like heaps. I mean, it cost me like 20 bucks to buy these 20 two or so. So 30 degrees, so it, it's it's racing over as you might expect, but it's such a different boiling point than the rest of the stuff. We can't really collect a fraction from like 30 to 75 because that sort of limits its usefulness. So I think I might collect this in two fractions so I have sort of a, a pentane fraction that like boils at 30 degrees and a more of a hexane heptane fraction. Even run the soxylic extractor, you know, the, the pentane will boil off first and all the hexane will struggle to boil. So we'll just run it in two fractions. That's all right, I'll just need another flask. That yellow color is really starting to show. If I wanted to be more thorough, and probably next time I do this, if I do this again, I'd probably reflux the mixture over the sodium hydroxide because it seems the heat has really driven that reaction. You can see the difference in that, you know, that yellow color and the stuff coming over is, is good. So we're really, we're really not getting our ketones over, well, I think anyway, but um, to be more thorough, uh, we should really reflux it over the hydroxide. Alrighty, we're nearly done. This is the 50 to 70 fraction. We're at about 60 now. Uh, and yeah, obviously we've got a very yellow color in here. It's stopping any of that stuff coming over. Uh, it's all crystal clear over in the distillate. All right, and here's our final yields. I've labeled this uh, pentane slash hexane with a boiling point of 30 to 45 degrees. There's a 40 grams, which is roughly uh, 60 mils or so. Uh, this is the hexane fraction with a boiling point of 45 to 65, which is quite a large range, but it's still useful in its own right. And we have 25 grams, which is what, 45 mils or so. We have a bit left in the flask, which I just didn't distill over. You can see just how yellow that got. So it's good that we had the hydroxide there. So no, we didn't get a whole lot, uh, seeing as we started with 700 mils. I reckon we got all the pentane slash hexane fraction out of that. But um, I think there was a lot more hexane, especially because we didn't really get into the heptane fraction at all. Um, there's a lot more of this we could have got there. If we just had a bit more time and a bit more patience, I think a bit better heating as well. Um, with the actual raw fuel, which, you know, for the price of fuel, seeing as how accessible and the cheapness of it, I think this is still worth it. So if I wanted to do, say, a reaction with sodium metal, this would be a good solvent for it because um, it's not going to react with the sodium and a lot of other solvents will. But if I wanted to do, say, a, a plant extraction with, say, a very sensitive compound in the plant, but I didn't want a lot of the other terpenes and I wanted a uh, good selectivity, um, hexane or this pentane is possibly a very good 
uh, solvent. I could put some of the leaves of that green plant into the soxylic extractor. I think you know what plant I'm talking about. That's right, the epizote plant, because <laughs> we need to <laughs> extract more of our ascaridol. I actually did attempt it a couple months ago with chloroform and it didn't work. So that's actually one of the main motivators behind this video is we wanted a better solvent rather than uh, chloroform to try the extraction of ascaridol from epizote. Yes, anyway, thanks for watching.